Okay, so this live is going to be a breakdown on what I keep saying. We got to Will D. Smiths. What am I saying? Well, let's break it down. <clears throat> Will Smith. Will Smith is from where? Philadelphia. <clears throat> Will Smith. That's what I want to talk about. So, I keep saying that we must will these Smiths. You ever wonder why these names? You ever wonder where these names come from? Will Smith. Let's break it down. Will Smith. Where's Will Smith from? He's from Philadelphia. What do they have in Philadelphia? A bell. What is Will Smith? He is known for being the Prince of Bel Air. Hmm. What a coincidence. What a coincidence that a Philadelphia boy goes on a show called Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. What is Bell? Bell is also known as, mm, put it like this, Bell has the word L in it. And L has been referred to as a lord or a god. All right, keep going. Will Smith, Smith. What are the Smiths? Smiths are the agents in the Matrix. What is an agent? An agent is someone who wants to hold the matrix together and not allow you to escape from it. So, how do you escape this matrix? You can't force your way out of this matrix. You must will your way out of this matrix. Will is a difference between force. What is the difference between force and will? Well, when you force something, you are definitely demanding it. You're demanding your exit out of this matrix. No, 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 no. You don't demand in this matrix. You command this matrix. How do you command this matrix? Well, you do it with will. Where does your will come from? Your will comes from your intent. Where does your intent come from? Your intent comes from faith. Where does your faith come from? From belief. So what you believe in will define if you're able to exit out of this matrix or not. Do you believe that you're even in a matrix at all? So back to the concept, Will Smith. Why do we love Will Smith so much? Why was he in a movie like iRobot talking about technology and robots taking over? What, what, what is this about? What are we talking about? Well, we're talking about the singularity that is pushed onto you. And the singularity is that you are connected to something that is beyond your grasp. What would that be? That would be Satan. Now, let's break this down. We have The Wizard of Oz. Came out in, I think, 1930s, 40s. I don't know. Don't quote me. We have characters in The Wizard of Oz. Let's break down these characters. We have Divine Feminine. Dorothy. Also known as Dora. Ra. Like Ra. Pay attention to these names. <clears throat> then we have a dog. What would be the dog? The dog would be mm, God backwards. God backwards would be dog. Dog backwards would be God. Okay, so we have divine feminine came first. <coughs> then we have what? What comes next? God. <laughs> what comes after that? Well, we have a species known as the avians or arcturians. Or, man, they have all these creative names. The bird race. Uh, big bird. That would be the first creature that comes up in Wizard of Oz. That would be your crow. What is a crow? Crow is a grounded energy. It doesn't fly high in the air. It actually stays down here. This is for a reason. Next energy that is after the avians or the arcturians or this bird race um, that used to be reptiles, but let's not get into that. Um, you have something called a lion or a lyron. Okay, so there's another species. So you have this um, cat species, these thundercats. Who praises these thundercats? Well, you have a religious set here that praises that cat. Do you know what they're called? They're called Catholics, holy cats that do their rituals in cat -acombs. Let's not get into that, the divine pussy. Let's not get into that, purr. All right, so we have divine feminine, Dorothy. We have God or the dog uh, or the wolf species, which matters, the Anubis, the, the uh, guardian of the underworld. So what is he guarding? Who does Toto stay with the whole time? Divine Feminine. Y'all don't even see what y'all see right in front of y'all face. That underworld is Dorothy. But let's, let's, because where does she come from? From another world. From another world different than the world she's in now. All right. I'm trying to have y'all stay with me though. So we have Dorothy, Divine Feminine. We have this dog. We got uh, the Scarecrow. Scared. Scared to fly. Scared to actually elevate and be what the fuck he's supposed to be. 
uh, the lion. How are you going to be a whole lion and you're a coward? Dude, this is literally this, the, the you being the opposite of what you're supposed to be. So none of them are activating on their soul mission. So who needs to activate their souls? Dorothy. Who activates the souls of these energies in this movie? Dorothy, divine feminine. So who is activating your avatar right now? Please don't say some, some masculine deity. No, it's divine feminine. That is animating all throughout you but stay with it because this is where you are missing so we have the lyran or the lions who are cowards and then last but not least if i only had a heart tin man i'm gonna ask you a question when i ask you to spell tin t-i-n there's another way of spelling it right of course t-e-n hmm wait hold on so when you see tin man and that was a robot what are you getting? You are getting a 10 man. Well, when or where do we see 10? Well, we see 10 in a Roman number as X. So now you can replace that 10 man with the letter X. So now you get X men. Oh shit. Wait, X men. That's now. That's like 60 years later, right? Uh huh. So we have 10 man that actually represents the X man, the unknown man. And it's unknown because it doesn't come from this universe. So. We have the Tin Man. Well, I want everyone that's watching this to say something so easy. Say 10. Wait, wait, wait. Say 10. But when you say 10, you're actually saying Satan. Oh my God. Wait, hold on. Wait a minute. Did I just say that the robot was connected to the devil? Yes. The robot is connected to the devil. And how do you have a connection to that devil? Well, you're holding it. That is, that is your connection. So... I need you to understand how deep this is. When they released that iPhone X and how they just go from eight to 10. <laughs> Do you know why they go from eight to 10? Cause y'all don't understand dimensions. Y'all don't understand the principalities that are governing or ruling over you. They reside in different dimensions. Your Pleiadians, they reside within a certain dimension. Your Arcturians or Avians, they reside within a certain dimension. Your Orions reside within a certain dimension. And your Syrians reside in a certain dimension. These dimensions connect to numbers. Your Syrians reside within a ninth dimension. Do you know that they don't have access to the Syrian information or technology? The furthest that they're able to go and this is what happens when I do live. People message me all the fucking time. This is what happens when uh, they try to access the ninth dimension. They are closed off. This is why there's certain beings on this planet that have seven chakras and other ones have nine. You have some beings on this planet that are seven ether beings and some beings that are nine ether beings. It's because the ones that are nine ether do not have um, the same emotional baggage that the lower dimensions do. But let's leave that alone. So eight dimensions are connected to time. So I want you guys to understand this. Your Orion Empire, that on. <laughs> you ever thought about that? You ever thought about why there's some species that are ands and there's some species that are ons? Orion. Syrian. Arcturian. Pleiadian. Hmm. So we can keep going. I can go deeper and deeper into it, but this is not really what it's about. I just want you to understand what the concept of this movie is. In order for you to be able to change technology, a.k.a. Satan, a.k.a. the things that are controlling you from the future, the only way you can do that is through will. You have to will this technology to do what you need it to do. You can't force it. You force your um, energy onto this gadget, it will destroy you. Because you're not equipped to handle this force. This force is stronger than you. This force is actually older than you. But let's not even get into that. So I need you to understand that the only way you can really uh, handle these agents of this matrix is not by force. You don't fight them. Neo did not fight them at the end of the movie. He came to the conclusion that you can't fight your reflection. You must will your reflection. You must command your reflection. We don't demand in this life. You keep demanding, you, keep demanding, you will be part of the old system. So it's important for you to change from being a demander to a commander. Don't demand your children. Don't demand your husband or wife. Don't demand your government. All these demands are falling on deaf ears because they're connected to higher powers. And your higher powers don't like to be demanded. Love you guys. Just wanted to kind of just run that little rant. Just run it. Just run it real quick. And on that note, I'm going to go back and do some more sessions. Love y'all.